Father, we thank you for God just allowing us to be in the house of God today. Lord, before I ever come to church, me and you already talked. We already discussed. We, I worshiped you this morning long before I ever got to the house of God today. And what a precious time it was. Just right there in the living room. It was so good, Lord. I, I didn't want to stop. Thank you, Lord, for touching me already today. Father, I pray, God, that you touch the rest of us. That's another sound of our voice. And Father, I pray, God, that you'd walk up and down the aisle and in and out of the pews. God, that you'd touch every life that's here. That they may see you differently before they leave today than when they came. Father, that God, that you'd give them something, God, that they really wouldn't expect it, but God, you knew their need before they even asked. God, you begin to meet that need according to your riches and glory. Father, I pray you touch all the children, the teenagers. I pray you touch us all, God, today, because God, we need your touch today. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Touch the preaching hour of the songs of Zion. God, that you'd stir us one more time this side of heaven. We give you praise, glory, and all the honor. In Christ's name we pray. And the people of God said. Amen. And the people of God said. Amen. And the people of God said.
of God said. And give the Lord praise all over the house. As you be seated, if you can.
grace. I was on my way to hell, and God came by my way, picked me up, washed me off, made me a new creature, and a child of God, a child of the King, and it's all because of grace today. Somebody help me right there. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and stand, if you will. Uh, we're going to have a time of fellowship. Uh, we've got some folk that are here, there, and uh, everywhere. It's uh, it's it's vacation season, uh, but thank you all uh, for coming today, and we look forward to it. Now, I'll, uh, Miss Midge and Miss Carolyn can testify to this truth. What I'm getting ready to tell you, I, I'll tell it like Jerry Clower. It's a fact. What I'm telling you with my hand up. <laughs> uh, there was a time that when it was vacation time, we just as well not had service because everybody was gone. And we just, nobody was here. And we thank the Lord that God has given all of you folk that are here. You say, well, I'd rather be at, down at the coast myself. Uh, you ain't the only one, but here we are. We're going to worship God together. Amen. And so uh, let's, let's do that today. Uh, it's handshaking time. So they're going to play there. And I want you to go and tell somebody you're glad to see them in the Lord's house.
uh, as you make your way back, uh, good to have you. Praise the Lord. Uh, thank the good Lord for you. I hope you had a good week. And uh, I was thinking about a song, and I asked uh, Miss Georgette to pick one. And so she picked this one, and uh, I love this song. Uh, it has great, it brings great memories to me. First time I ever heard it, I was in Bible college one night, and they sang this song, and uh, we shouted and prayed and cried and wept and all that uh, for a while. And uh, I want you to listen uh, to the words of this song. Let it speak to your heart.
talks about God's everlasting peace. Um, I don't know about you, but there are times in my life that I get uh, under burdens of life. Yeah. And the stress of it all uh, seems like that it's so much that you don't know where to turn and what to do, but for the child of God, Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful that beyond all of it, on the other side of the storm clouds, we know our Savior, we know the sun, the S-O-N, is still shining. Uh, I'm glad that I can have peace 
when it doesn't make sense. I can have peace when everything around me is falling apart because there's a God that has given me, that God that has given you everlasting peace. Listen to what I'm saying. God, 
I uh, see because I done been to him way too many times, John. I done been to him and found out that I, when I seek him, he hears and he answers prayer.
going to be different than what you might expect, especially when I say Revelation chapter 3, you've probably been already thinking about certain passages that uh, you normally turn to. Miss Georgette's going to help the kids, so all the children that uh, are going to want to go to the children's church, um, you can follow along there, Revelation chapter 3, I'm going to preach a message um, here, I guess it was last year now, I started preaching through the book of Revelation, we're almost finished with that now, uh, but I preached this chapter, but I did not preach this message. Um, someone once said it like this, the, bar, the Bible is like a multifaceted diamond. It sparkles every way you turn. Uh, when you look at it, that's why it's good to study the Word. Uh, we are admonished to study the Word. Study to show thyself approved, a workman unto God that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. When we read the Bible, um, I, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I want to ask you a question. How many of you have ever read the Bible through? How many of you make it a practice to do that regularly? I forget, um, Miss, Miss Mary might remember this number, uh, but Miss Fraley told me how many times she had read the Bible through in her life. And Miss Fraley did not have a, an education. Uh, she had to quit school to take care of her younger uh, brothers and sisters. There were a lot of words she did not understand. And she told me many times, she said, Preacher, when I get to those words, I just stop. And I say, Lord, help me to understand what I need to understand. You give me what I need to understand. And no matter where you're at, I promise you this, God will give you what you need from his word. And so I would encourage you, the Bible says this in Psalm 119, I think it's uh, somewhere around 176, somewhere in there. It says something like this, it says, um, no, it's 105, Psalm 119 and 105. It says that happy are they that love thy law and nothing shall offend them. The reason we get so offended nowadays is because we like everything else and we left this on the shelf. Mm -hmm. and see, the thing about the Bible is it cuts going and it cuts coming. It's a two-edged sword. It'll cut you going and coming. And you say, well, preacher, I don't like to read the Bible because of that. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be who I've always been. I want the Bible to read me. I want when I walk away from it, I want to be different. I want to be changed. Somebody help me right there. Eh, that won't cost you nothing. That wasn't in the notes. Revelation 3 and verse number 1. And the Bible said unto the angel of the church of Sardis, write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. You know, that's a word we don't hear preached a whole lot in pulpits nowadays. Jesus said in Luke chapter 13 twice, verse 3 and verse 5, he said, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I'm not here to give you a ear-tickling message. I'm not here to pat you on the back while you live in sin. Are we among God's people or not? I'm not here to make you feel good about going to hell. What I'm here to tell you is God calls us to repentance. God calls us to live holy and righteous before God in this present generation. Somebody else. Remember, therefore, 
how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, and for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. I want to call your attention back to verse number two, where the Bible says that we are to be watchful and we are to strengthen the things that remain. Strengthen the things which remain. I'm gonna preach around that idea for a little while. How can we strengthen the things that are about to die. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that you'd help us for the next little while. I pray, God, that you'd make preaching easy for us. I pray that, God, you would speak supernaturally, Lord God, from my lips to the, uh, Lord God, to the ears of your people, Lord. I, I pray, God, that it won't be my words they hear, but it'd be your words that they hear. Oh, God, speak to us in this place. Change us, shake us. Uh, Lord God, may we walk away different and changed. We ask these things in Jesus' name and God's people said. Amen. Amen. Uh, this morning as we begin to look here uh, in the book of Revelation, uh, you know, we, we read about this church, uh, the church at Sardis. And the church at Sardis, uh, I don't have to go back to uh, what, what we went through as we preached through this, but the church of Sardis was a real church. However, it also was a representation of churches like this. It was a church, it was a representation of a time frame like this. Uh, so many people believe that this time frame that Sardis uh, would represent is the time frame from about the time of the reformers uh, up through the church at Philadelphia. The next church that you read about is the church at Philadelphia. And there are great things that happen uh, in that church and through that church. But Sardis had a name that it was alive, but yet it was dead. It had been around for centuries. It had been around for a long time. And there was a lot of things that God used to do there, that used to happen there, that used to take place there. And now everybody looks at it on the outside, and on the outside it looks great, it looks fine, but on the inside, Jesus said, it's dead. Every church that you run by and drive by that has got the doors closed up, the windows boarded up, they didn't plan to end that way. They didn't plan for that to be the end of their ministry. No. They had dreams. They had plans. They had a vision for the future. But somewhere, somehow, they died. Oh, they might have still had a building. They may have, may have still been running programs, still taking an offering, still singing songs, still have a preacher stand before a pulpit, but they were dead. That is one thing, Brother Robert is a pastor, that scares me to death, is that we would run through the motions, that we would just assume like Samson did. We go out and shake ourselves, assuming, presuming that God would be on us. And the Bible said, Samson wist not that the Lord had departed from him. God help us as the church in 2024 to be alive like we advertise that we are. Uh, we don't need a church full of dead people, dead men's bones. What we need uh, are some people that are alive in Christ. Uh, what we need uh, is an army, uh, as Ezekiel called, uh, that army of dry bones. Uh, 
to get up and live. Hey, hey, I say we as the church in this community, we as the church on this corner ought to be the best thing going on. We're alive. We, uh, as we begin to look into this, I'll try to get through this as quickly as I can. There's a problem that was mentioned. The problem is this. I, the Bible said, I know thy works. Now, who's talking? It's Jesus. Jesus is talking. He knows all about it. The one that walks in the midst of the cup of the candlesticks. He knows exactly what's going on. Oh, yeah. They may have been able to hide it on the yearly report. They may be able to hide it when they report it to the denomination. They may be able to hide it uh, for this and that. It might look like that the numbers are up, givings up, baptisms are up, uh, new memberships are up. That it might have looked real good on the outside. But inside, Jesus said, I know your works. You've got a name that you're alive. That thou livest and art dead. When we read the book of Revelation, I, I will make, make mention of this real quick. Here's a good rule of thumb. When you study prophecy, specifically the book of Revelation. Revelation 1 and 19 is a template that you can understand the Bible prophetically through. Jesus said, write the things which thou hast seen. There are some things that are in the past. And the things which are things that are in the present that are happening right now. And the things which shall be hereafter. He said, there are some things that are in the past. And you can make note of those. There's some things as such as these seven churches that he could see right then. They were in the present. They were happening right then. He said, there's some things I promise you they're going to happen. In chapter number four, he said, after this, said there was a trumpet sound and said I was called up into heaven. He said, it's going to come. Everything that I'm telling you is going to come to pass. But I can't help but notice the problem in Sardis is the same problem a lot of churches have today. We are in danger of losing the power of God in the pursuit of popularity with men. We are in danger of losing the anointing of God trying to get the approval of men. You know it well. I do as well. You hear about a church and, man, that church is big. That church has built a new building. That church has this many people coming. They gave that much. Of, uh, they, they have this many in their offering and all that. And all of a sudden, you're thinking, well, why don't we? Why are they? And I'm not one of these people that's against the big church. I know of many a good big churches that God is using greatly. I know that. I believe that with all my heart. I'm not here to throw any arrows at a church and say, you know, here's one thing I learned. I, I, Kelly told me this, Kelly's mom and dad. Uh, they started going to a church out in a tobacco field in a little uh, storefront. And after a while, it had grown a little bit. They built a bigger building and a nicer building. They got a good choir that was there leading the choir and all that stuff. And churches around them, Brother Jay, started wanting that preacher to come preach at their church. And it's one of their choir to come sing uh, for their revival meetings and all that. And that was good and that was fine until the church got bigger than theirs. Then all of a sudden they were compromisers. All of a sudden they were wrong. So I'm not against that. You, you know, you may not believe what I'm going to tell you, but people will say to us sometimes, you go to that big church down there, don't you? 
I'm like, you talking about the same church that I pastor? It ain't no big church. But some people look at it and say, well, you, with that many people, y'all got to be doing something. Something's wrong with what you're doing. We stand in danger trying to compare ourselves to others. Living in some sort of popularity contest. See, they had a reputation they were alive, but they had been so influenced by culture but that the world around them made them lose what they once had. It, we stand in danger, church, of trying to make the world like us that we might become like the world. And back up and say that one more time. This world hated Jesus, and it will hate you if you act like Jesus. So I guess we need to ask the question, why ain't they hating on us? If we are trying to make the world like us, we're in danger of becoming like the world. This church, the church at Sardis, the church that uh, we uh, know something of here, represents the state of that church and how that they had a name that was, they were alive, but they were dead. There are churches right now, if I called their name, there would be certain images that would come to your mind. If, if you went during the heyday, I don't mean anything bad, but I'll say this. Modena Street Baptist Church. At one time, Modena Street Baptist Church was a, I mean, it was the, the church in the Gastonia area. There, there are other churches, I don't want to call those names and, and bring that up, but uh, Jay, if I was to go over to that church today, it is a shell of what it used to be. There's, uh, how many of you have ever, ever heard of D.L. Moody? Anybody ever heard of D.L. Moody? D.L. Moody was a great evangelist. D.L. Moody was used mightily for God. God uh, took uh, D.L. Moody. Someone said uh, that he, uh, he grabbed England in one hand and America in another hand and shook two continents for the glory of God. D.L. Moody was a great man of God. They made a Moody Bible Institute. And they had a church the Moody Memorial Church. That, I mean, thousands would come there. I don't even know that it's still in existence now. Thou hast a name that livest, but thou art dead. I'm, go I'm going somewhere, but I, I need to build a little bit of a foundation. The problem is that God sees that there's deadness. The prescription is this. He said, be watchful. Strengthen the things which remain. That be ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. So we see that Jesus gives a prescription of what needs to happen. One of the things that he mentions is this. He said, strengthen the things which remain. The things that are still hanging around. The things that have not lived. It's so easy for you and I to get our focus on what has left. Or maybe I can say it more plain. Who has left in your life? Everybody that walked out. Everybody that done you wrong. Everybody that lied on you. Everybody that cheated on you. Everybody that did all that to you. We can focus on that so much that we are blind to what God has given us that's still right beside us. There was a remnant. Remember in John chapter 6, 
probably the longest chapter in the book of John. Down around verse number 66, it said that many walked away from Jesus when he started preaching a hard message. They followed him for the loaves. They followed him for the fishes. But when Jesus really got to preaching and teaching how life as a Christian ought to be, said from that time forward, many left him. And here's something that was interesting to me, Jay. Jesus did not go after them. Jesus not one time ran after them. He looked at the disciples that were left and he asked the question, will you also go away? I like, Peter had a lot of bad things that he said in his life. Peter was a lot like a lot of us. If he said it, it came, before he even thought about it, it came out. But I like what Peter said right there. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. Where we're going to go, there ain't nobody, ain't nowhere I can go to find out what I've been getting from you. And though they may have left, though the crowd may have left, though they have may have walked off, I'm still here. We're yeah. still here. We're with you, God. So I want to focus on what remains. The remnant in the Bible is mentioned many, many times and you'll find throughout scripture that remnants often play a significant role in God's plan. We are guilty of pursuing what's next Pursuing what we're going to do after and forgetting about the things that God has left with us. The remnants that we walk around with. We, as God's people, the prescription said, strengthen the things which remain and that be ready to die. I, uh, have we got anybody in here ever worked in the paramedic field? Uh, you got somebody then in the paramedic field, or maybe you worked in the uh, in nursing or in the hospital industry and all that. One thing that they'll do is someone comes in with a cardiac arrest. What they'll do is take those pads. They'll charge that up. They'll slap them on your chest. Clear. Boom. And you might open them eyes. If you don't, you know what they'll do. Clear. Boom. Hit you again. Strengthen the things which remain that be ready to die. God's telling us, if you see them and they look like they're on life support, let's go ahead and strengthen them. Don't kick them while they're down. Don't spit on them and fuss at them and say, well, you're getting what you deserve. You, you knew it was going to happen. Don't you reckon they know that? Yes. They don't need to, for you, Mr. Know-it-all, Miss Know-it-all, to tell them what they already know. Oh, yeah. What they need is somebody to pick them up and help them get on the horse and help them get to the house. We often pursue the next thing. I, uh, I, 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 there for, for a little while in my ministry, I was discouraged on the speed at which the Lord was growing the church. Because I, I had forgotten what the Bible said, said that he would add to the church. It was his job. And, and, and I looked at it and I thought, well, I ought to be doing something. I ought to do something to make this happen. And Miss Violet, I'll tell you, that's something that I struggle with. 
Because I always want to put my hand to it and make something happen. But I'm learning. God told me, you fill the pulpit. And I can fill the pews. I can give you people that are hungry if you'll give them something to eat. And so I'm trying to give you something straight from the Word of God that will help you when you're hungry. That'll help you when you're hurt. That'll help you when you're hopeless. That'll help you when everybody else has walked out on you. I, I'm trying to tell you uh, there's a God uh, that loves you. Uh, there's a God that has not given up on you. Uh, there's a God that will bring you in. Somebody help me right there. <laughs> Here's the truth I read. God doesn't need anything you lost to bless you. God will always use what's left to bless you. You might feel like, well, if I just had this, and I just had that, watch this. I'm going to break some, some, some dude's hearts right here. How many men do I have in here that, that feel a tinge when, when I say what I'm getting ready to say? Man, I wish I wouldn't have sold that such and such car. Yeah, uh -huh. so the altars are open in just a little while. We're going to ask the Lord to help us. It don't, it don't have to be me in yeah. Hallelujah. They, they, they are, there's something about it that we think the thing that we lost Everything would be better if we had that back. But God don't need that 67 Chevelle. God don't need what well, yeah, there we go. We're gonna wait for trying to build right now. Hey, hey, hey. God don't need what you lost. God can use what's left. Hey. Your blessings are not tied up in what you lost. They're all around what's left. The other day, my wife and I were sitting in my little office there at the house, and um, and I looked at her, because it kind of just, it just dawned on me this. Jay, my youngest daughter, she seemed to be 12 years old. And usually around here, they enter into our youth ministry, our teen ministry part, going into sixth grade. So you got sixth grade through 12th grade. And uh, it dawned on me. My oldest is getting ready to turn 17. And two years, she won't be in the teen part of youth camp anymore. She'll be going to the young adults. And I, I don't mind telling you, me and my wife just cried a little bit over that. She might be looking. <laughs> I ain't gonna look at her, she'll be crying right now. <laughs> but in 2021, 2020 happened, everything shut down. And we took a group of teens up to a little campground up in Pigeon Forge with the Tab family and a couple other families uh, and a couple preachers joined us there. And we had our summer youth camp. And little did I know this, Miss Joyce, that would have been the last youth camp with that group of teens. Never dreamed it. They started getting married, getting jobs, and all that. And all of a sudden, our once vibrant youth group was a shell of what it was. And I'll never forget the discouragement in the beginning of 2021 
thinking we've poured. Can I just be real with you just a little bit? Thinking as a pastor, thinking as a pastor. You know one thing that I've learned over the years? I might do the preaching, but I can't pastor this church without her. She helps me. She's an encouragement to me. She comes alongside me and speaks in the lives of ladies ways I can never do it. She was very involved in the youth ministry and still is uh, a lot in some ways, especially camp. And I'll never forget how discouraged we were. We poured and poured. What good did it do? The devil sure likes to show up when he knows when you're down, don't he? And we just said, well, I guess we'll just have to start over. And my oldest daughter, that was her first year of going to youth camp that year. And we ended up putting together a pretty good little group that we ended up taking. Thought we didn't have anybody. But what would have happened if the devil had had his way? And we just sat down and said, you know what, you won. It's over. It ain't worth it. See, I could have got hung up in what I lost. But what I, hallelujah, I'm about to have a Baptist fit right here. What I didn't realize is the blessing in what was what was left. The blessing, and a lot of them ain't even ain't here right now. But the blessing for me was watching them get excited. Watching them start singing in the choir. Watching them get involved in serving God. My blessing in what I lost was in what was left. Yes. Hallelujah. You say, well, preacher, I'm gone. I'm past that time frame now. I'm not living in that reality now. But you are. It might be a different phase. It may be a different season. But the devil's trying to get you to focus on what you lost. And you're not looking at what you got left. Because your blessings are going to come from what's left. Jesus used the 12. It wasn't the crowd. It was the 12. Specifically the 11. Uh, because one of them was a devil. And he, he didn't get called up on who left him, who walked out on him. He said, I strengthen the things that remain. I want you to stand with me. I, I'll, I'll mention this as she comes. When the Bible then says in verse number four, thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. He said, I'll not blot his name out of the book of life. I'll confess his name before my father and before his angels. There's a promise that God has for you and me. He said there's a few names that are left. Whenever Elijah had to go up against the prophets of Baal and Elijah had to go up against Jezebel one more time. He got down on himself, said, I'm doing it all by myself. Ain't nobody helping me. And God said, there's 7,000 that have not bowed their knee. There's 7,000 that are still standing. Don't you dare focus on everybody that walked out and forget about who's standing within. Who's right beside you? Here's what I want us to do. 
How many of us will come around and say, God, I want to thank you for what's left. Here we come. God, I want to thank you for what you have done for me. Oh, I've been guilty of looking at what I lost, looking at what I used to do, what I can't do no more, how what I used to have, what I don't have, I, what, how things used to be and they ain't. But God, I've got so much left. There's so much left. I want to tell you, thank you. Thank you for the things that remain. Thank you for the things that still are. God, you blessed me with what was. But Lord, I'm still blessed in what is. While these are praying, maybe you're here this morning to say, Preacher, Preacher, I, I'm a lot like you. I have become overcome with those things sometimes. And I just need for God to help me out of where I'm in. There's some. Here's my hand, preacher. I'm going to pray for you. I won't come to you and embarrass you, but I do want to pray for you, preacher. Preacher, I'm going through an awful tough season right now. I know God's good. I know he's able. Lord, would you, would you help me? Here's my hand. We see those. Thank you for your honesty. Maybe you're here this morning to say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure if I were to die right now, if Jesus comes back, I do not know without a doubt that I'm going to heaven. I do not know without a doubt that heaven will be my home. I can't tell you that I've been born again and I know it. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Here's my hand, Preacher. I do not know for sure that I'm ready to meet Christ like I am. Would you pray for me? Is there anyone like that? Here's my hand. Put it up. Put it right back down. Just be honest with the Lord. I will not embarrass you. I will pray for you. I believe God with you. Here's my hand, preacher. Would you pray for me? Would you pray that God does work in my life? I'm not ready to meet him, but I need to be, but I want to be. Here's my hand. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking around. Many years ago, someone prayed a prayer like this with me. It was not what I said, but it was what God heard through a repentant heart. When I called on him, he changed my life. I'm going to pray a prayer like that. If God's dealing with you and God's drawing you, don't you dare leave this place like you came. Let God do a work in your life. How can I do that, preacher? Pray with me. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've failed. I've messed up. I've done wrong. I know it, and you know it. And God, just like this church, it had a name that was alive, but it was dead. Lord, I might seem happy. I might put on the outward appearance of happy. But Lord, I'm dead on the inside. I'm hurting on the inside. I need help on the inside. Dear Jesus, save me. Wash me in your blood. Make me new, make me whole. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for me. Thank you for dying for me, forgiving me, coming to my heart and save me. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you prayed a prayer like that and you meant it in your heart, won't you throw your hand up, preacher? I prayed that prayer and I asked God to save me this morning. I asked the Lord to be my Savior right here where I am. Here's my hand. I won't embarrass you. I won't call you out. But I sure will rejoice what God has done in your life. Is there anybody like that? 
Lord, I tried to do what you asked me to do, say what you wanted me to say. Lord, I pray, God, for these that you're dealing with, I pray, God, you would continue to do that, draw them to yourself, that they may be born again, changed, saved, before it's too late. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us. Thank you, God, for meeting with us today. We ask these things in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. 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 <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Well, let me make uh, just a couple of announcements uh, before we leave. One, we need uh, workers, vacation Bible school workers. Uh, if you can help, even if you can't help, all three, it is just three nights in August, August uh, 5, 6, and 7, Monday through Wednesday. Uh, the first week of August there. If you can't help all three nights, if you can help one night or two nights, um, go by there, Kelly. If you will, go go back there, and uh, she's going to help you uh, answering the questions that you may have about what position is does this, that, or the other. Uh, that'll be out there at the in the foyer. Uh, also, uh, Pam, hold, hold that up. Uh, if you got one of those uh, forms to fill out for a rise, uh, if you can. Um, if you can uh, fill out one of the, if you filled out one of those forms already, if you can get it to Pam, I've got to have those as soon as possible. And so I handed those out. If you didn't get one, uh, she's got blanks as well. And so I need to get those back. Hopefully, before you leave today, would be great if you take the time to do that. Also, uh, Miss Mitch, we need to get the, those 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 chicken buckets. Praise God, that's what we need. Um, we uh, just came up with a, um, a need um, in, uh, in Arise, and some of you have been giving toward and bringing snacks and drinks, and you can certainly still do that. Some of you already done that, thank you. We'll carry those up with us. Uh, but there's been some uh, problems with uh, the prices of uh, groceries. If you go to the grocery store, you know something about that, all right? So things cost more this year than they did last year. And uh, I'll just own up to it. I probably should have put a higher fee on the rise as a whole than I did, but I didn't expect the prices would change so much and it would be so drastic. But it is, and so we need to cover that. We also have one uh, kid that, um, we are working with right now that has had been working toward getting to go to Arise and something happened and they didn't look like they were going to get to go. And now it looks like things have turned around and they, uh, they look like they are going to get to go and we need to f help uh, cover that expense uh, for that. And so uh, if you can help when you give in those buckets out there, uh, that will help do that. When you go to the plates, that's a regular tithe and offering. Y'all know the drill. You see the chicken bucket, that means kids are hungry. Amen. Uh, that's what you think of when you look at it. Little, little kids is hungry and they need chicken. Hallelujah. You look at it and say, my preacher's hungry and he needs chicken. Amen. And you say, well, you could do without chicken. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Um, let me make mention of this. Next week, uh, actually today, marked 10 years um, that I had called Brother Robert Fraley and asked him about helping us. We went an extra night in revival back in 2014. And I said, won't you come and help us? And he did, and it wasn't long after that God uh, worked things out and put him here. And he's been with us pretty much for 10 years since then. And um, in today's church climate, a pastor being in the church 10 years is a long time. Somebody working in, in youth ministry, music ministry, all that, for that amount of time, that's, that's really uh, amazing, and we want to bless him. So next week, we're going to have a special offering, and I, if you give you give cards, I tell you what means a lot to me. When somebody takes time and writes in a card, I mean, and not just write your name. Take time and write something. Brother Fraley, you were such a blessing to me during this time in my life, were you? I promise you, he'll keep that. He got a little drawer somewhere he's going to put that in. And whenever the devil jumps on him, because the devil jumps on him, amen, he's going to pull them cards out, and he's going to read that and say, praise God. 
I might not have made a difference in every life, but I made a difference in that one. God help me. Amen. Jay, I want you to pray for us. Pray with me off of it. Father, Lord, we love you. And we thank you so much for this day that you've given us, Father. Lord, we thank you for another time and opportunity we've had this morning, Lord, just to worship in your house, Father. Lord, we thank you for this message that we've heard uh, this morning, Father. Lord, I pray that you just continue to bless this church, continue to grow this church. God, I pray that you get these offerings that are taken up. God, I pray that they would go to the upbuilding of your kingdom, Father, Lord, and the touching of people's hearts, Father. I pray that you'd help us to take this message that we've heard this morning, apply it to our hearts and to our lives. Help us all to go our separate ways. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.